Hello, everyone. I'm David Begno. We'd like to interrupt the CBS This Morning Saturday to take you to Aurora, Illinois, where police right now are giving updates on yesterday's mass shooting that left at least five people dead. We'll listen. Yesterday's timeline by uh, Deputy Chief Keith Jackson. And then following that, we're going to return to Chief Zeman for some brief questions. Okay, Chief Zeman. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kristen Zeman. I'm the Chief of Police of the Aurora Police Department. Before I begin with an update, I want to give a heartfelt thanks to our citizens and business owners in Aurora who have delivered food, gifts, and well wishes for our officers in recovery. Gratitude also to our law enforcement brothers and sisters from across the nation and beyond who have reached out to us. It means so much to all of us to know that you are sending positive energy for our officers who were injured, the responding officers, and the victims' families. As we relentlessly pursue answers to questions on why a person could do such a thing, we feel the support from all of you. And my cup runneth over. I would like to begin this morning by providing an update on the condition of our officers who are still being treated for their injuries related to yesterday's shooting incident. All five of our officers are recovering and are under the care of physicians in the Chicago metro area. Officer one is a male, 39 year, years of age, with 13 years of service here at the Aurora Police Department. This officer suffered a gunshot wound to his lower extremity and is in stable condition at a local hospital. Officer two is a male, 52 years of age, with 25 years of service at the Aurora Police Department. This officer suffered a gunshot wound to his upper extremity. He was treated and will be released from the hospital later this morning. Officer three is a male, 52 years old, with 24 years of service here at the Aurora Police Department. He suffered a gunshot wound to the lower extremity. He was treated and released from the hospital yesterday. Officer four, a male, 53 years of age, with 30 years of service. This officer also suffered a gunshot wound to the lower extremity and was treated at an area hospital. Officer five, a male, 24 years of age, with just under four years of service. This officer suffered a series of shrapnel wounds to the upper extremity. He is currently being treated as an, and is in stable condition at a local hospital. Officer six, a male 23 years of age with two years of experience is here at the Aurora Police Department. He suffered a minor injury while responding to the incident. The injury was not related to gunfire. All of the officer's injuries are considered non-life threatening. We would also like to provide limited information on the employees of Henry Pratt who were victims of yesterday's shooting. Clayton Parks of Elgin, Illinois. Mr. Parks was the human resource manager at Henry Platt. Trevor Wayner of DeKalb, Illinois. Mr. Wayner was a human resource intern at Henry Pratt and a student at Northern Illinois University. Russell Beyer of Yorkville, Illinois. Mr. Beyer was a mold operator at Henry Pratt. Vincente Juarez of Oswego, Illinois. Mr. Juarez was a stockroom attendant and forklift operator at Henry Pratt. Josh Pinkard of Oswego, Illinois. Mr. Pinkard was the plant manager for Henry Pratt. Another shooting victim, a male employee of Henry Pratt, was treated at an area hospital for non-life-threatening gunshot wounds sustained during the shooting incident. Preliminary investigation indicates that the deceased victims were located in the same general area of the Henry Pratt facility. While this investigation is ongoing, we believe that there was only one assailant. Here is what we know so far about the shooter. 45 years of age. He lived in the 1900 block of Sal Martin Road in Aurora. Six prior arrests by the Aurora Police Department, including arrests for traffic and domestic battery, domestic battery related issues. Last arrest in Aurora was in 2008 for violating an order of protection. His last arrest was in 2017 by the Oswego, Illinois Police Department for disorderly conduct and criminal damage to property regarding the weapon used in the shooting incident. In January of 2014, the shooter was issued a firearms owner's identification card, or a FOID card. On March 6, 2014, the shooter applied to purchase a handgun from a local gun dealer in Aurora. On March 11, the shooter took possession of a Smith & Wesson 40 caliber handgun from that same gun dealer. On March 16, 2014, 
the shooter applied for a concealed carry permit at an unknown location. During the fingerprinting and background process, it was discovered that he had a felony conviction for aggravated assault out of Mississippi. The date of that conviction was August 3rd, 1995. It should be noted that this conviction would not necessarily have shown up on a criminal background check conducted for a FOID card. Once this felony conviction was discovered, the offender's conceal and carry permit was rejected and his FOID card was revoked by the Illinois State Police. Assistant Special Agent in Charge Brendan Iber of the ATF Chicago Field Division is here and able to describe how a firearm is traced. Thank you, Chief. Good morning. So when ATF initiates a trace of a firearm, we start with the, the manufacturer of that firearm. From the manufacturer, we follow that firearm down to the distributor, from the distributor down to the local federal firearms licensee, and ultimately, ultimately to the first initial purchaser of the firearm. If we need to, we'll follow that firearm from the first initial purchaser and ultimately into the hands of the, uh, the final possessor of the firearm. Once we get all this information, we, we actively and proactively share it with our, with our state and local counterparts who have a vested interest in the investigation, in, in this case with the uh, Aurora Police Department. Okay. Thanks, sir. Deputy Chief. Uh, first, I'd like to give you a uh, rundown of some of the resources that was used yesterday. Uh, we used approximately eight SWAT teams from the uh, federal all the way to the local level. Approximately 25 to 35 agencies responded, consisting of uh, approximately 200 to 300 officers. And as I go through the timeline, there will be a reference made to contact teams and to rescue task force teams. We used approximately eight contact teams throughout the initial search uh, to look for the offender. Those contact teams were made up of approximately six to eight officers. We also formed approximately 13 rescue task force teams, which consisted of approximately eight officers and three um, uh, medics or para para um, uh, um, personnel from the fire department. To start with the uh, timeline, the original call came in, 1324 officers. Officers were dispatched to 641 Archer Avenue, active shooter in the plant. Second call, 1324 hours. Caller stating shots fired, employees being terminated. 1325 hours, two shots fired inside the warehouse. 1325 hours, shots were heard over the phone. 1326 hours, more shots fired. 1327 hours, more shots fired. Those calls were calls that came into our 911 center. At 1328 hours, our first officers responded to the scene. At 1328 hours, a determination was made to activate our special response team. At 1330 hours, first report of an officer being shot. At 1331 hours, indication made that there was four victims upstairs. 1331 hours, indication made that there was a victim uh, in the bay. All of these five victims that were referenced were uh, determined to be deceased at that time. 1332 hours, more shots fired. At 1332 hours, the second officer reported being shot. 1333 hours to 1333 hours, more shots were reported uh, as being fired from our officers. 1334 hours, third officers reported being shot. 1335 hours, a fourth officer reported being shot. Between 1337 hours and 1352 hours, uh, our personnel were responding uh, to extract some of the uh, wounded officers at the scene. At 1331 hours, the Bearcat breached the facility uh, to allow uh, aid in the entry of uh, officers responding to the scene. At the point in which the Bearcat uh, breached the scene and they recovered the, uh, the wounded officers, a simultaneous operation began to look for injured, recover the officers, and also start clearing the warehouse. 
from 1352 hours up until 1458 hours, no contact was made with the offender. At 1458 hours, officers indicated contact made. At 1459 hours, confirmation was made that the suspect had been neutralized. Okay, so at some point uh, when we have the ability, we're going to release uh, an itemized version of the timeline via our social media outlets, uh, and we're also working on releasing uh, at some limited preview of our some 911 tapes that might be coming in that we can release to you uh, sometime uh, in the near future. I'm going to open it up now briefly for some questions from the chief. Chief? Go ahead, sir. Can you clarify, um, was he fired in the morning and then he began shooting, or had he been fired, and was he an employee yesterday when he walked in the door? My understanding, yes, according to witness at the scene who was part of that, uh, that termination meeting, as that he reported for work, and during this meeting he was terminated. And my understanding from the witnesses is that he opened fire right at, after the termination. Did at he the person who fired him? Correct. And then he moved out of the room and began shooting. We believe that several people who were involved in that meeting are, are the ones who are deceased. Yes. Does the series of events uh, relating to the um, gun license and the revocation of his FOID card mean that he was in illegal possession of that gun? That is absolutely correct, yes. That's him? what we're determining right now as part of our investigation is what happened with that, and we're hoping to be able to report that to you at a later time. But absolutely, he was not supposed to be in possession of a firearm. But just to clarify, that was his own gun that he had initially purchased, right? Correct. Was the suspect, suspect uh, shooter killed with a single bullet or multiple? Um, at this time, we believe that there were multiple. You said that at 1331, the Bearcat reached the facility and allowed the officer to enter. Can you break that down? What exactly does that mean? Actually, yes. If I could call uh, Lieutenant Robertson to come in and talk about a little bit about operations. Uh, he's our subject matter expert on that. The Bearcat is our armored rescue vehicle. Uh, when we got there, uh, there was uh, door 14, uh, industrial door with glass in it. The glass was all spidered and broken up, and we did not know where the suspect was. So he used the front of the Bearcat to push all that glass out and the push bar that opens the door so officers could make entry and see where they were stepping into the building and uh, quickly make ingress and egress. You know what, why don't you stay up? Any, any, any more operation qu questions? Any more operational questions for the lieutenant? Yeah. Lieutenant Robertson? Yes, sir, in the back. Was he informed earlier than yesterday that he was no, under he, some sort of probation? Are there any more operational questions? Oh, no, I'm sorry. We can, get him at, we can get him to answer some questions. Uh, why exactly, can, you, can you just de describe uh, why there was such a delay in finding him? Was he hiding? Was it sort of difficult to find him? Was there sort of some tactical approach? There was the initial contact with the officers, and then after those shots, everything went quiet. We started uh, entering the building with contact teams, a search for him, and it's, was it? 30,000 30, square foot warehouse. It's a massive facility uh, with numerous racks of large valves and machines and throughout the building. So uh, he broke contact and went to the back where we ultimately located him. And it just took us some time to work our way through that building, uh, looking for injured, looking for him. And ultimately, that's what it took to get to him. Did you describe the location where he was hiding? And did he exchange that fire with the officers? It sounds like no officers were hit when they found him? Did he run out of bullets? He was in a back machine shop at the very back corner of the building, farthest from the area that we made entry into the building. Uh, he was probably waiting for us to get to him there is the way it appeared, and there were some shots exchanges. The officers made their way into that area. Explain, contact was made, and just a minute later, uh, I guess that this issue was resolved. Can you add some clarity in terms of what actually happened there? It was a, just a very short gunfight, and, and it was over. So he was basically in, a, in the back waiting for us and fired upon us, and officers fired Have back upon him. Have you been to uh, determine whether the, the gunshot uh, wound uh, was self-inflicted or from one of the officer's guns? We don't have any information. They're still going through that part of the investigation. Was there any verbal conversation between officers and the suspect at that time? You know? No, there was not. Were you in the room? Did they, did they give you information as to where he was, the 911 callers? Uh, no, there, we had the initial 911 calls, and 
Uh, after that, it was, as far as I know, but we were getting over the radio pretty quiet with 911 calls pertaining to his location. Uh, the building was, other than our initial entry in the building where the offices are, once we got into the warehouse, uh, there were not people in there that were pointing in that direction. It's a, a large open facility, and we really didn't see anybody, in, on my team anyway, in the warehouse area itself. So what was the process of evacuating people out of the warehouse once the shots started? I was going, we had a few people that were sheltered in place that we had to get out of the building, and uh, then it was just a matter of going through and starting to search through the rest of the building. What did you see as you worked through the building, and were you part of the team that found the suspect? There, there was a lot of okay. just open shelf areas, and again, like we made it back to the ultimate machine shop, so. Okay, we're going to have, have the chief, we'll, we can save some of these more for the later. We're going to have the chief come back up and ask, and she'll answer some more questions. Any, any more questions that we have? Yes may pertain to the ongoing investigation. So we'll be able to get some more of these answers after the chief comes back up, okay? All right, thank you. Chief? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't want to speculate. I'm sure that my colleagues don't want to do that either. But it seems like this worker, this person, already knew something bad was going to happen. Perhaps he knew that he was going to get fired because he had a gun at work. Do you know anything about that? Do you have any information regarding that, that situation? I do not. The only thing I know is that he was called in. Um, once again, we can surmise that, that he was speculative about what was going to happen, as evidenced by him arming himself with a firearm. Uh, that's, again, you know, I mean, we're speculating there. So I don't know exactly what was communicated to him. He did report t for a meeting where he was terminated. So all the victims who were shot were in the room with Gary Mark in that meeting? No. no. Several were shot in the room with him, and there was a, another um, on a different level. Do we know, Chief, do we know what Chief was the intern in the room where he was terminated? I am not sure about that. Do we know what led up to that termination? Was there some yeah. sort of... No, I do not know. I don't know what infraction took place for, for that meeting to occur or the termination to ultimately occur. Overnight, how many people were investigated? Uh, did you guys talk with witnesses, uh, people who worked there? Roughly how many people? We are still in the process of interviewing those witnesses, and that's why we, have, we still have a lot of, of information to sift through. My understanding is that we have another 40 witnesses uh, that we still need to speak with. Was there a relationship between uh, the shooter and the three others um, not in the office that were shot? I do not know any relationships other than they were all employed by the same by the same company. I, I honestly don't know. Can you explain what the process is supposed to be after a FOID card is revoked? Uh, after a FOID card revocation, the subject is provided a letter stating that they need to um, they need to relinquish their firearms, and we're looking into why that did not happen. That's part of our investigation. Should he have relinquished his firearms to the Aurora PD? It, the state police sends out a letter so he can relinquish it actually to any law enforcement agency, but because he lived here, this would have been the agency that he would have relinquished them to. And is he supposed to volunteer the weapon, or if he doesn't show up with the weapon, should someone from state police go to his house? The letter states that he needs to voluntarily relinquish the weapon, and we're looking into whether we followed up on that and what agencies followed up on that. I genuinely don't know what he received. We just have records that a letter went out, but I I mean, again, we, I'm, I'm not sure about that. That's that. All of of that is is speculative right now, and those are the unanswered questions that we're determining to find out. And how much ammo did he have? We know that he had a 40 caliber firearm, and we found multiple spent magazines. Chief, to clarify, when someone gets a FOID card, even though their background check. The results haven't come back yet. They can still purchase a firearm? So the part of a firearm purchase does not require fingerprint. There is a background check, but no fingerprint is required. Um, so as part of the conceal and carry, that is when the fingerprint was uh, that came back from that arrest in Mississippi. So so there's so you don't don't need the fingerprints to purchase a firearm, but there was a waiting period but during that you, time. Did he wait the waiting period? My understanding is that he was. It was several days later. That's in the timeline. Or several days later, where he he was in possession of that firearm. Well, yes. You only need fingerprinting in order to be able to conceal your weapon. Correct. Was well, the shooter trying to escape the building? The We're not sure. In, in the when he the the deceased victims 
once the officers made contact in the building, we believe those victims had already been shot. So we don't know if he was uh, attempting to go um, and, and look for more victims, but that's when our officers engaged him. So, so we let's again, fast. once again, we believe that officers saved lives that day um, by getting there as fast as they did and okay. stopping him. How much time elapsed from the moment that he shot those individuals who were delivering his termination to the other individuals that were shot afterwards? Can you tell, in other words, he, 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 there was a termination meeting. He shot the individuals in that termination meeting, and he made his way out of that room? Correct. I am not sure. I know that those, those victims were shot inside the meeting, and then subsequently there were more shots fired, and then that's when our officers engaged. So it was within those first five minutes that, that everyone was struck by gunfire. Okay. We got one right here. Yeah. Go ahead. He's been trying to get through. What have you heard in terms of what kind of employee uh, the shooter was? I, I have no information on his employee history. Yeah, I'm right there. He's so been trying to get through. you haven't talked to his employers then? You haven't talked to his bosses? Over we are in the process of talking to them. Yes, go ahead. Can you describe the mood of the department right now? I know a lot of your officers knew these officers who were wounded. How are they doing today? Yeah, so um, thank you for asking that. We appreciate that. I also want to point out that you know, we're thinking about the victims of these families, uh, the families of the victims. Uh, that is also foremost in, in our thoughts. Um, and as you know, we're trying to take care of each other. Um, as I had mentioned yesterday, it's a very somber feeling because on one hand, we have some relief that all of our officers are going to be okay, uh, non-life threatening. But I know that those officers, uh, there's a lot going through some uh, not only physical uh, pain, but then we have some emotional pain, too. And I know that uh, with the lives lost, the officers are wishing they could have done more. Um, I think that that's pretty natural, though, for them to want to do more. And uh, But we have to pause and, and look at what they did do. And uh, so the mood right now is is um, pretty somber, but we're, we're taking care of each other. That's what we do best. Were there any security measures in place at Henry Pratt prior to this incident, something that could have I don't know, like a metal detector or something that could have caught Gary Martin carrying a concealed weapon. Not to my knowledge, no. Right here. Do you have a comment on how, how many, how many were magazines held? No, nope, we're right here. Shot, uh, inside the termination meeting? I, I believe three were shot inside the termination meeting. And two outside. Yes, okay. but I'm not sure what their proximity was. I, I don't I don't know the answer to that. You were right here. Right here. Was in the meeting? No. Uh, just a point of clarification. Was he on a shift and called into a meeting or he was called from his home to I meeting? don't know if he reported for work for his normal work hours or whether he was called in for a meeting I'm not certain of that we're still trying to determine that from from those who were there okay. you got the How many the rounds were fired by the shooter I, I don't know exactly we do know that we found multiple spent magazines from his 40 caliber weapon that was that was in, in his possession okay. Yes in those magazines how many bullets and were these bullets in any way special or more violent like a hollow point or something like No that? not that I'm aware of I genuinely don't know Is there a laser on the gun Yes there was a laser on the gun that's what we're trying to determine now. We have not yet released the scene. Uh, we're still working on that, and so we're going through the building to determine if there were right there any. There. Yes? It, it seems like every time there's a shooting like this, it, it, it often becomes politicized. How do you handle that as, as the leader of this department, and what's your message to your officers? Oh, well, I, I mean, the, we have to take the, the, the politicalness out of it. I mean, the fact is, the fact remains is that some uh, disgruntled, person walked in and had access to a firearm that he shouldn't have had access to. I don't want to make it political. This is a human issue. Um, lives were lost, and I want to concentrate on, um, number one, taking care of our victims' families, taking care of our officers, and we're going to continue to suit up and do the job that, uh, that, that we are sworn to do every day. Um, I mean, it's hard to bring politics into it. It's, uh, you know, a, a violent act. Is there an issue to address as it relates to access to, to guns? Well, I think there there always is. I mean, we have to find out. That's part of what we're going to determine as part of our, our investigation is, you know, why and how he had that firearm. Yes, ma'am. Did anybody know about the gun? I do not know. Okay, last one right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Go ahead. Have you given us an indication that of why he was being terminated? No, I we do not know. No. Right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Right. Sure. Good. All right, folks, when we have more information, we're going to post that all via our social media outlets. If we, if we know that we're going to have another press briefing, we'll also post that. I believe that Henry Pratt plans to have 
uh, a media briefing here at the Aurora Police Department this afternoon at 4 o'clock. I don't know that we're going to be involved in that briefing, uh, but I think they are making plans to be here, so stay tuned for that. If we're aware of it, we'll post that on our social media platforms as well, okay? If there's any more questions, please direct them through our social media platform, okay? Thank you very much. All right. All right, so you've been listening to the news conference there in Aurora, Illinois, where the chief of police took to the podium and gave us the latest information on the workplace shooting that happened yesterday in Aurora. A 45-year-old man who was fired opened fire and shot dead the human resources manager who had just fired him, the plant manager, a human resources intern, and two other individuals who were in the room with him. According to the police chief, right about as soon as the officers responded and got to the scene, there were reports of officers shot and down. All five officers who were shot are listed in stable condition. They are expected to survive. Uh, this went on for quite some time. The chief said they had two to 300 officers that responded to the scene. They had eight SWAT teams that were used. Uh, what we know about the shooter, um, no need to give his name at this point, but let me tell you what we know. He legally obtained a gun, but at some point in obtaining the gun, uh, officials realized that he had a prior criminal conviction from Mississippi that dated back to the mid-90s, 1995 to be specific. So his license to carry a firearm was revoked. That's what we know at this point. Adriana Diaz and Vladimir Dutier are at the scene. We hope to get to them in a little bit. We're going to toss to some sound from the police chief just a little bit earlier today. That's what we're determining right now as part of our investigation is what happened with that, and we're hoping to be able to report that to you at a later time. But absolutely, he was not supposed to be in possession of a firearm.